Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, we are heading into peak real estate season at a time when interest rates are really high. So what does that mean for home buyers in Pittsburgh? Host Megan Harris is sitting back down with broker Jessica Baker to share tips for buyers and sellers, talk about which pockets of the city are still somewhat affordable, and play a little game to see how she'd describe some senior home features. It's Monday, April 8th. I'm Mallory Falk, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. Jessica Baker is a real estate broker here in Pittsburgh. I don't actually know what a broker is. What is that? Um, Hi, I'm so honored um, to be here. (laughs) And yeah, so a broker is basically you take, I believe it's 70 more hours of class, like on top of your real estate agent, um, you know, your salesperson licensing. And then you have to have completed so many transactions over a certain period of time and you have to submit those. so. So a broker is like a higher level. Yes, exactly. And so if I wanted to open up my own shop and be Jessica Baker Realty, I could, but I love where I'm at. I'm at Achieve Realty and it's great. Well, congratulations for leveling up. Yeah, (laughs) thanks. Yeah, that changed since last time we talked. Yeah, um, I feel like springtime is when I I personally always start to see listings begin to pop in the area. I don't know if that's like a common thing. Yeah. Um, How do you think this year is comparing to others so far? It's a very interesting year. So, um, I, you know, at the end of last year, we really weren't sure what was going to happen. Because, I know. The interest yeah. rates started going absolutely nuts. Insane. Absolutely insane. And so, yeah, it was really hard because I think a lot of people just gave up and said, forget it. You know, we're going to renew our lease. A lot of, you know, we have a lot of students or we have a lot of, um, you know, people that have come out of college and then stayed here. And so a lot of our market is based on lease renewals, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, you figure you're a first time home buyer. Well, you've been renting somewhere before that. Yeah. Um, And a lot of our lease renewals go with the school calendar. So in June is when a lot of people may, you know, if you're pit, whatever. Um, So a lot of that, people start thinking backwards from when their lease is up. So I get a lot of people that are like, my lease is up in three months. We have to figure somewhere else out to go, you know. Um, So I think I had a lot of people last year with the interest rates that they were like, forget this. You know, we're not going to move. We're just going to stay put. Um, We're going to wait for the interest rates to come down. And then I think everybody sort of got through the winter and figured out that that maybe wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And decided like, forget it. Let's just go. You know, it's it's time. I'm sick of being here. So. But it's tough because the housing market is also so much more expensive than it was even five years ago. Yes. I know Pittsburgh is still theoretically the most affordable, but it does not feel that way sometimes. No, it really doesn't. And, you know, it's hard because I'll have clients that are looking in the 200,000 and under range and it's slim pickings. And, you know, sometimes you see houses in that range and you're like, I, this isn't even livable, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. it's really hard. It's it's gotten a lot more difficult. And I think what we've seen already this year, um, you know, going into April is that it's starting to look a little bit like 2020 with like the bidding wars and everything selling within a weekend. Um, and not everywhere, you know, I don't want there to be that one seller out there that's like, well, my wife has my place sold, you know, yeah. but for the most part, like I've been telling everybody, um, you know, there are really hot areas in the city where things are just going crazy. And, you know, like we're up in bidding wars again and, and you can say, we'll put it on and we'll have an open house and it'll be gone by Monday or Tuesday. What is reasonable then? Like, what can you get in the city? And I know it, I know it varies by neighborhood, but what can you get for 200,000? Um, for 200,000, let's give me like two, let's say 250. Okay. okay. So 250, <laughs> cause I just had one that this happened. So it was listed for 225. Um, it was a really cute flip, a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and they had done a nice job. Um, you know, some flips we are wary of, but this was actually a good one. It was done well. I've seen uh, some really sketchy ones, like painted countertops with uh, like just regular ceiling paint. It's, it's, it's no, weird out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You have to look. You have to look a little bit closer um, when you see the, um, I, I don't know if I can say this on the pod, but we call them the meathead flips um, because it's like whoever just went into Home Depot and picked whatever glass mosaic tile they had on sale Aww. and made no design choices whatsoever. They just picked like the easy way out. So anytime you see, I know, you know, gray's getting a bad rap and I have gray in my house, um, but gray everywhere is sort of like a telltale, you know, mm-hmm. oh, this was a, a quick job. So not that that's always bad. Some people are just trying to be neutral. Um, but when we walked in, we 
to those types of houses, we look a little closer. But <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off point. So 250, I would say, because um, I just had clients in, for example, it was listed for 225 in Bellevue. And they were up against seven offers and we got it for 255. But it's a really cute redone house. It's got an eating kitchen. It's got an extra little office room on the first floor, mm-hmm. like very nice tile in the bathroom and, you know, a nice... Um, I don't know, like a teak uh, countertop for the sink, like very nice, tasteful, good upgrades with a nice backyard, no off street parking, no garage, you know, that's extra. But that's, you know, you can get some good houses out there for the 250 range. But Bellevue is outside the city. Well, that's true. That's true. It's right next to it. So It is close. It is yes, close. I love yeah. Bellevue. But yes. this, yeah. this is not CityCast Bellevue. Can you find something good for 250 inside the city? Yes, you can. I mean, I think, you know, obviously you're... People tell me they have a budget of 250 and they want to be in Highland Park, Squirrel Hill, Shady Side. That's uh, tough. Right. No, that's not that you're going to get a shell of a house for that, you know. Um, but there are definitely areas that, you know, you can find like Brookline Beach View. You know, if you wanted to go more south, you could, there is stuff in the West End, believe it or not. Like, I mean, there are things in Northside. There are some things in Brighton Heights, which is city. Um, there are things in Observatory Hill. There are lots of different sort of little pockets. It's maybe... You know, I always tell people who are moving from out of town to like, I literally pull up that, oh my, I wish I knew the name of the artist who did the neighborhood map. And it's mm-hmm. like, I know there are a couple out there. Um, and it's like the neighborhoods are written in the shape of the neighborhood. That oh, they I are. haven't seen that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. It's really great. And so I'll be like, this is helpful to kind of get a sense of like where you're looking at and where you're going. Um, and so maybe, you know, look off the beaten path on some of these. As you're having these conversations, are there types of houses maybe that are easier to sell people on? So it's really interesting because I think everybody has their own distinct style and and what they kind of envision themselves in. It's not hard, but like what happens is I'll get a husband and wife and like he really loves mid-century modern and she wants new construction, right? And so it's like that's what I'll say, you know, we'll go out and look at houses and they can't agree. And I'll say, okay, go home and you need to open a bottle of wine and to make a list <laughs> of your must-haves and the things you can compromise on. You There's know? a fair amount of counseling involved mm-hmm. in this. There is. There is. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any places or spaces that you maybe advise people against? So one thing that I always explain to people, especially people who are not from here, is I say you have to keep in mind that Pittsburgh, you are always either on the high side or the low side of the street. And if you look— You mean like with the hills? Yes. If you look out your window where you are at your house, you're going to figure out which side you're on, right? So you either have a lot of steps or you have very few steps or no steps or you're either— even lower than the street level. Mm -hmm. And it's really true. It's so funny. Like, and it's just the way we're built. We're built on hills. And so, you know, sometimes like the, it's very extreme. There's like, you know, 25 or 30 steps to get up to your house. But maybe you get an amazing view for the trouble. Potentially, but not always. Not always. <laughs> We're blocked by hills as well. Um, True. But so why I tell people that is, um, you know, people will see we have drones for real estate photos for a reason, right? They get right up in front of the house and they take the picture and you see one or two steps and then you drive by and there's like 50 and you're like, this is the only way in. I can't come in from the back. I'm going to have to bring my kid, my groceries and everything. Yeah, um, I toured several houses like that. And I see toured, I drove up to them yeah. and I was like, oh, I, I cannot carry 15 bags yeah. of groceries up these 72 steps. Exactly, exactly. So that's one thing I always tell people like, you know, and some people come from New York and they're used to a five-story walk up and they're like, this is nothing. This is great. Um, um, and, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just you got to know what you're getting into. So mm-hmm. I always say, look at that. Keep that in mind. Do you find it's easier when folks have non-negotiables, like things that they're just like, hard line, I need this or I don't want that? No. <laughs> that does not help. <laughs> no. Well, and here's the thing. I When I talk to people, um, the first thing I do is I usually set up a search on the MLS, which is where all of our listings are. I, you were just explaining this to me off mic. It's like the master database. I didn't know there was one master list yes, to rule yes. all. It's not Zillow. <laughs> They steal it from, Zillow steals it from the multi-list. I yeah. mean, that makes sense, but still. But, right, yeah, who would know? Hilarious that there is like one spot in all these different companies yeah. are just using the same thing. Exactly, and they're, and it's by region. So ours is the West Penn multi-list. And um, there are like 8,000 agents that are subscribers to the West Penn multi-list. We're Western Pennsylvania. And then Philadelphia has their own multi-list. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So like I am licensed in the state of PA. I could sell you a house in Philly, but I couldn't get on their multi-list unless I started 
paying subscribing to that one too. Right, exactly. Of course, it's always about money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love the look behind the curtain though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So when I meet with clients and, you know, the first thing I do is I set up a search on the MLS. Uh, I try to keep it really narrow because if you get too specific, you're going to get like two houses. So I think that, you know, that's important to, like, I have certain things that I'll say, how many bedrooms are a must? How many bathrooms are a must? Okay. Do you have to have two full bathrooms or could you have one and a half? Mm -hmm. Right. That's, I try to shape it that way because if you put too many constraints on it, you're really not going to have any houses to look at. And so sometimes I'll say to people, you know, well, would you be okay if the house was perfect, but it didn't have a garage? And generally <laughs> people will say yes, you know, but sometimes people are like, no, we have to have a garage. I'm like, okay, done deal. We can't, you know, without a garage. And there are some things I can search for and some things I can't. So people are like, it has to have a flat yard. I'm like, one, we're in Pittsburgh. God, I wish Zillow had that as a I know, applicable thing. I know. But then you get into what realtors classify as flat or not and yard, right? They'd be like a five by 10 little square and they'd be like flat yard, you know? <laughs> and I'm like postage stamp. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I think that um, my advice is to try not to limit yourself. Like if you can be open, try to be open because, you know, you might have room to build a garage or add a powder room. Like I've had clients who turned a coat closet that was unnecessary into a powder room, right? <laughs> you know, you you can generally kind of make it work. Well, you know, you talking about the size of the yard and being creative about those descriptions. Um, I feel like realtors in particular are very good creative writers. Uh, the way uh, y'all as an industry tend to talk about specific amenities. We are. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to put you to the test if you're game. Okay. Um, we went through and just found some silly active listings from different parts of the city. I'm going to show you some pictures of some special features in some houses around here. And you tell me how you might describe them to a potential buyer. Uh, okay, okay. Or describe it on behalf of the seller. <laughs> yes. On behalf of the seller. Yes. Potential buyer. We're being a lot more real. If we're doing this for the benefit <laughs> of the seller, if I represent the seller here, we're trying real hard to to be very nice. About yes. Everything. And to be clear, I know that the real answer is that you would just not talk about it. You would emphasize the other more positive aspects. Absolutely. <laughs> We're just not going to have a picture of that. But okay. I'm still curious how you might think about it. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay. So to look at this one, nice and cute. Mm-hmm. So it's got things that make me crazy, like drop ceilings. And um, that <laughs> drives me insane. <laughs> I think, wow, this one in the kitchen is really intense. It's a lot going on there the whole house is black white and gray there's like a couple pops of color but they're all in like sort of strange places like the sink bowl is a bright color um i think i would say something about like (laughs) your you know black and white oasis uh (laughs) completely turnkey lots of modern features uh bring your pops (laughs) of color to complete this amazing space that that's very good. Yeah, that's I think because it's all white, blank canvas, <laughs> blank canvas, ready for your artistic touch, and a little bit of elbow grease. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. That's good. Okay, well, uh, here's another one. Oh, I hope you get me some weird stuff. I'm excited. Okay, so this is a lovely house, truly beautiful, but it has this one bathroom that's a little bit different. Will you tell me what you see in that picture? Wow, a wet room. I would say the <laughs> toilet's in the shower. The toilet is fully in the shower. The toilet's in the shower. So if you miss, you don't worry. There's a wardrobe <laughs> right next to you. Um, I would say, is this, I'm assuming maybe in the basement, I hope. It doesn't specify. Wow, it really doesn't. Um, I would say great for washing your dog. <laughs> right here. Um, perfect place to, <laughs> I mean, it's funny because like, uh, you can't, there are certain things you can't say, right? You can't say like kids and families, you know, right? Mm-hmm. You can't talk about like perfect for families. But like, if I could, I would be like, perfect place to throw the kids after a muddy day at the playground and hose them down. <laughs> but that, you know, we can't put that. So great for potty training. <laughs> yes, exactly. Great for potty training. Oh, that's good. I think I'm going to hire you. <laughs> okay. Here's another. Um, hmm. I think you got to go with this one. You got to say lovely stained glass. It's truly beautiful. It is. It's Um, just, it also, it's, so there's a, it's a big stairwell. There's a gorgeous, enormous stained glass window next to one of the landing points. But the other landing point has a different sort of window. It's got a little pop in. Mm -hmm. That looks into a bedroom, a sitting room. Hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, a little peep in there and say, hey, what you doing? Mm -hmm. Passing by. Um, You know, we generally see these between the kitchen and the dining room. Uh, I think, you know, you could say convenient drive up window in your second floor. 
<laughs> have your own indoor ice cream stand. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I feel like I would have said to them, let's drywall over this or maybe hang a picture in front of it or maybe not have it open. <laughs> let's just close this for the pictures. And then, you know, we can deal with it when people come see it. Put a post-it note and say, seller will be willing to close this up before closing. Oh, you'd go that, you'd go that far. <laughs> I feel like I might. It's, you know, if people are really weird about it, because it's not in a normal place. It's not. And you feel like if this is your bedroom, you have no privacy. <laughs> I know. Right? Can so, you imagine if you have like, you know, a preteen or something and right? they just like pop it in to say hello? They just, they're like, I'm shutting my window now. <laughs> closing these shutters. Uh, when you look at pictures like this or you imagine how to like advise clients to have photos taken, like what are your best suggestions? So it's a great question because we're in like prime listing season right now. So I always tell people my first thing is hide all your personal photos. And that's, you know, like being personal photos photo. or personal everything. No, personal photos. Personal everything is OK. Personal photos because and people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know that. And the reason why I don't think people really understand, it's because we are a nation of nebs and we all want to look at who lives in this house. And so I will have people that I'll be touring, you know, I'll take buyers through and they'll be like, hey, this guy looks familiar. I feel like I went to college with him or like <laughs> maybe he was in my brother's program. It's, you know what I mean? I'll be like, we're not buying the people. Like, let's move on. So that's why I always tell sellers, hide them. Because people just want to look and see, you know, oh, he went to Northwestern or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Um, number two is I like whenever people have their stuff in there. I would much prefer to sell a house with stuff in it than an empty house. Okay. But I think, you know, one thing is I always tell people, yes, we want it to look like you live here, but you don't live here. Right. Someone so like, lives here. Yeah. Someone lives here, but we want to take like everything should be off of your refrigerator. And they're like, we left just these two things up. I'm like, nope, everything gone, gone. Clear refrigerator, no bread on top of the refrigerator. Clear. You know, I always try to get people to clear off their ca countertops for the most part. Um, you know, OK, you have your air fryer, you have your Instapot, you have your Ninja. You have like, let's put some of this away, even if it's in the basement, because you want it to look more open. Mm -hmm. um, so and I just kind of generally say, like, declutter in general. And I always tell people, you're going to have to pack this anyway when you move. So we can start now by putting some of these non-essential things away. But we want to leave, you know, like decor items, I think, are generally OK. It depends. You know, I mean, sometimes you, you don't know, need live, laugh, love on every wall. No. Uh, uh, and that brings me to my next point. Word art. I have a big thing against word art. And I'm sorry. I know it's so popular right now. But here is why. People, we are trained to read. And when you flip through pictures, you will read the word art and move to the next picture and not see the room. Oh. And it's, I do it and all the time. And I'm always like, oh, love. Oh, laundry here. Right. And I don't even, I'm like, I don't know what the room looked like, but I read it and I was moving at such a pace. Right. So I'm very against word art in real estate pictures. If you want to have it in your house, that's great. But when you go sell your house, I say, hide that away. So keep it tidy, but keep it lived in. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's finding that direct balance. And then, you know, what happens is before pictures, I go, I, I give my sellers, you know, okay, here are your marching orders, do da, da 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 And then I go before pictures and then I, you know, fluff the pillows and like shove the stuff under the beds and put the stuff in the closets that shouldn't be there. And I kind of pare everything down to get it just right. How much time does it usually take you to do that? <laughs> Depends on the house, but generally like an hour. I can zip through in an hour. And then if I'm still going and the photographer's there, I'm like, don't take a picture of that pile. That pile is not in the picture. There's <laughs> always a pile that follows behind the photographer that's not in the pictures, you know. How much time did it take you to get ready for this today? Uh, not that long, actually. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, was, I was like, should I say, I mean, like I had a, my kids were up late and I went to bed at like midnight. So after my husband went to work, I was like, I'm taking an hour nap. So yeah. That's how we want people to prep for this. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to stress about this. It's going to be great. I, I need my sleep. So. Jessica Baker is a Pittsburgh real estate broker here in Pittsburgh. You can find her on social. We will link it all in the show notes. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This has been such a blast. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you'd like to hear more from Jessica, including whether a Pittsburgh potty counts as a half bath, you can check out our previous interview with her from last summer. We'll include a link in the show notes. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. And until then, happy eclipse viewing.
So if I'm, I have an empty house, like I'll have it virtually staged just because it makes such a difference. It took me so long to realize when I was buying for myself that some of that stuff was digital. The Photoshop skills for that realtors have access to are really incredible. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. Like you really have to zoom in there and then I'm like, wait, that lighting is not natural. How did they do that? Yeah. And then what's funny to me is whenever um, agents will put the virtually staged picture and then they'll put the empty picture and I'm like, yes. don't do that. You just worked so hard on this virtually staged picture. Do you ever feel like you could just let yourself go a little too overboard and you just like Barbie dream house it. Yeah. You know, I sometimes I say we need to dial it back. But for the most part, they pretty much are, you know, they know just the right amount of stuff. Well, now I'll look at stuff that's like actually staged, but I'm like, this looks too good. Is this virtual? You know, and I'll be like zooming in. There is a thing on the multi list that says, are these images virtually staged or not? Oh, so they're so, supposed to mm-hmm. declare it. Yes. They wow. Say yes or no. The yeah. declarations on whether a photo has been retouched getting really interesting. Oh, it, no kidding. Right. 